life. Okay, so I asked this lovely question on what if someone, you're, someone you um, love is going through suffering? What do, what do you do? Um, and, you know, I was really um, inspired by my teacher, Dr. David R. Hawkins, and his words, and that led me on a journey. I also had many mystical experiences as well, which, uh, which allowed me to intuit the truth of what he said and okay so you know my mother who passed away uh, was it a couple of years ago so she had a lot of illnesses she was a compulsive overeater uh, she had what was leading towards multiple organ failure at the end she was a diabetic end stage diabetic and uh, was had heart failure inoperable then was starting to go into kidney failure at the end so pretty grim stuff um, but I was so I knew that the the source, uh, you know, and and you know I often talk about um, Dr. Hugh Len in these rooms regularly because I, I only talk about him. He's not really one of my teachers, but I talk about him about the evidence of what happens when someone clears the data of what's being picked up in the universe. So I just use that because it's such a visible and famous example of what it is to just clear your perceptions of what is occurring in the world and your one's perception of suffering in the world and uh, you know I often talk about the, the non-dual realm and also about uh, Hawkins talks about the levels of consciousness so you're accessing different levels of power as you're clearing your own stuff of what's being picked up uh, what's being tracked in the world as a problem so I'll just reiterate this thing uh, of, of Dr. Hulen. So Dr. Hulen, I'm just saying it in my own words as I understand it, and he was his work was made famous. Uh, but so there's a prison full of peop, uh, let's say violent criminals in Hawaii, a whole prison full of them, and I think someone asked Dr. Hulen for help, and he all he asked was the criminal files, just the files of everyone. He didn't want to go meet them. Just, okay, this is an axe murderer, this person likes running over kids, this person likes, you know, doing whatever they were doing. You know, it was pretty bad criminals. And he had the files, so he could, and he was a mystic, so he could probably connect on some level to what was the, what was the patterns that was going on with these people, their profiles. And all he did, and I'll sum it up in my own, is cleared the data. You know, that's something within the collective that's being tracked. Okay, that's unfor unforgivable to be running people over. Uh, so that's a thing that's tracked from the collective. That's a thing that's written over his psychological profile, whatever it is. And he, as you go up in the levels of consciousness, because in when you're when you're identified with your ego, your experience of the world is in separation. You feel like I'm in this body, I'm my thoughts, and I'm perceiving a world at that level of consciousness. And to the extent that you're identified, this is Hawkins' work, to the extent you're identified with your ego, your perception of the world is different and what your experience of the world is different, filtered through the levels of repressed fear, shame, guilt, and you're, you're also attracting phenomena, you know, or you could say resolving karmic situations which are flaring up in divine order. So these... Um, these situations are coming and the separation is experienced. I, I, am, I am witnessing, uh, I experience myself as me here in this body, in my thoughts, and I'm witnessing that somebody's out there suffering, suffering, or shall we say for, the, for this video, suffering. So I, in separation, perceive that my mother is suffering with kidney failure and feeling powerless that I can't take away that suffering. But the problem is, if I stay at that level of consciousness, where I'm in separation and I perceive my mother is in suffering, uh, in that, uh, that level, and I'm witnessing things with these repressed emotions, and I'm making this dualistic, dualistic, thank you, Anna, witnessing this dualistic projection, then that means that the access to, shall we say, infinite power is, is reduced. So the potentiality, we do a Course in Miracles here, the potentiality for the Holy Spirit or for miracles to intervene is blocked to the extent that I'm feeling separated and I'm judging that this situation is ex being experienced out there in another person, which is part of the, you could say, the collective 
collective patterning in this world or the, or the, the, the karmic unfolding of what's occurring. So, so the thing is, then I have to let go of what I perceive as myself and the other and the suffering. That's the role. And as I start to clear it, the shift in my ego filters and the perception of what's happening changes. But also, one is inviting in higher levels of consciousness, high levels of light, higher potentiality for miracles and release are coming in to the extent I'm letting go of my experience of a separated identity and another separated identity and my perception of what is suffering and what is happening is also being shifted as I'm releasing these levels of identified tracking. So you, I mean, my experience is as you, as you let that go and as that power, that feeling of separation is dissolved, often, it's not guaranteed I mean, with karmic permission, miracles start to happen. I remember some examples were... Um, now Hawkins uh, shared this, uh, that he let go of 23 illnesses, many of them life-threatening, just by, you know, either you're doing the Course of Miracles, uh, he was doing the Course of Miracles, and many people in that group, uh, that attitude and healing, like their cancer disappeared, their AIDS disappeared. It's like as you let go of the idea of separation and, and duality, and as you go into those infinite states of light, all these illnesses were starting to disappear in that group as they were doing the Course in Miracles. Uh, so the, the, the thing, the ego that was holding on to these repressed feelings and holding on to this limited data, from the, as that was disappearing, it seemed like these illnesses in that group was disappearing. And, you know, I had so many illnesses, and when I met Hawkins, all, you know, all of these illnesses, all of these illnesses are left from me, kidney failure, gout, asthma, as I just cancel the beliefs and let go of the repressed feelings, and as these perceptions started to dissolve. Now, my mother, you know, she did die, but I remember one of the incidents was, uh, 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 and I was actually doing a course lesson, and I liked doing the course lesson for dissolving stuff I perceive in others. God did not, lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles, um, lesson 14 from A Course in Miracles is God did not create it. Hi. God did not create it, so it's not real. So. One day she came in and she had like swollen legs, you know, she was getting um, various things going on. And she went to the GP and the GP said to her, there's nothing we can do. You've got heart failure, there's no, absolutely nothing we can do. And she came back and he said, oh, the GP said, there's nothing that can be done. And this is, this is, this is, this is what, what, what I witnessed. So I start, started doing, I felt sorry, I felt compassion for her. So I said, you know, God did not create oedema in my mother, so it's not real. God did not create oedema in my mother, so it's not real. I was doing this in my room. And then, and it was funny because she started talking to me. And then she, she said, look, oh, the swelling is going down over a couple of days. And then it, it went, you know, I think it went down very dramatically as I was going over. God did not create the oedema. And I was tracking that she's suffering this thing. And it was like going down in her. And I realized that I had... I'd always done it on my own stuff. I never realized you could do the cancelling of beliefs. I cancel my, you know, God did not create it in her. Uh, God did not create Odium and Mother, it's not real. And so I realized that I could, of course there has to be comic mission, I could start clearing stuff for others. And sometimes miracles would happen. But also, miracles will happen if I clear my own stuff of that something's happening in the world, which is my general way of transcending, you know, Rather than try and facilitate change, which I think is, you know, may or may not happen, it's like if I clear my experience that there is a problem in the world or that I'm experiencing suffering in the world, because if I, you know, what's my level of consciousness if I experience people are suffering in the world? My level of consciousness will be I'm in separation, they're in separation, they're a limited being that's suffering. That's my perception. and. I want to save and rescue that person as a separated being trying to fix another person in separation. So I have this dual separated self. If I'm holding on to, I feel bad because you're feeling bad, my level of consciousness would be, let's say I feel, I feel fear you're suffering something. So my vibration to the, in the collective will be I'm resonating at the vibration of fear. Mm -hmm. So how, much, how many miracles, how much light how much of a channel of the infinite non-dual realm is going to come in if I'm feeling fearful that you're in fear. So that's pretty low vibration. I'm also tracking separation. I'm experiencing that I'm a separate entity 
and a limited separate entity because if I experience myself as my body and my thoughts, I experience myself as a separate entity that's going to die. Mm -hmm. So I'll automatically project that onto the other person. And I'll go, oh, poor you, you've got this poor illness. And I'll energetically and in my languaging be transmitting, poor you, you know, you're a limited mm -hmm. being, you're suffering this illness which is real. And, you know, oh, poor you, you're suffering, I don't know what it is, you're suffering heart failure. Poor you, I feel sorry for you, I feel bad for you, let me say. And so I'm reinforcing energetically, and also I'm not channeling much light and capacity for miracles. I'm in the vibration of fear and poor you, which is a very low, very low separated thing. When you hold these feelings of shame, guilt, fear, anger at the world or at things, events, you're, perce you're perceiving through that, so you're at a very low level consciousness. So you're not really helping much light or miracles in the situation. You're just like, you're just a separated being, witnessing suffering in a separated world. So as you start to connect, I remember actually, I can talk about this for people who are suffering. I remember I actually went to see Hawkins in Sedona and I had my story of, I have kidney failure, I have gout, I have asthma, how can I be free? And he was just laughing and giggling, you know, and he made this joke, he said like, do all of this stuff, cancel your beliefs, whatever, and uh, do all of that, and, and if it doesn't work, I'll see you on the other side, and he just giggled, you know? And I got the energy, like he doesn't believe, you know, in death, there, really, there wasn't there. And I got the energy and I laughed, you know, I connected to his energy field, and it's like, oh, so, okay, cancel my belief, God did not create it, do all the spiritual work, and whether it leaves or not, it's not a problem. It's still not what you are. So, but as you clear, as you clear your perceptions of the world and your negative energies of the world, and you can do God did not create it in them, so it's not real. So you, basically, as, as you dissolve it, you're dissolving the separation. And so a miracle may or may not happen. But whether it happens or not, still your presence in their life will be a grace because you've cleared your energetic fear and projection that you need to say you know the projection that you need to save them also has to be cleared you eventually want to get to a place where you're in a place for me of infinite presence with them because that's the maximal opportunity for their healing is you're not tracking baggage you're not tracking data i need to rescue this person or oh, i feel sorry for this person it's my job to to do it you know, or I have to do the Course in Miracles like a big job. You want to clear all that negativity in you so that you can be that clear channel and then the potentiality for miracles is increased. So my job is like uh, with my mother before she passed away, I was just trying to transcend my mother, not to pick up any data with her. And, you know, there was a lot of love in the end. And there was a lot of miracles. There was a lot of baggage cleared in just transcending everything everything that I thought she should be, everything that I wanted to be for her, just transcending all of that until you're not picking that stuff. So you're in, you're in the witnesser or observer, you're in the infinite non-dual realm. Mm -hmm. and the non-dual realm does not pick up a special person. You know, not, you know, you're in the street and people are passing back, that's non-duality. You're, you're not picking up meaning. You're not picking up that anything significant is happening, so you stay in the infinite field. So you're a, ma a maximum channel for the infinite non-dual realm. But if you suddenly a special person who has meaning comes up, you're not channeling the infinite realm. You're, channel, you're tracking all this data, all these past associations. You're having all these emotions come up. So actually, the, if there's no me, maximum light goes to the other person. And also, if, you've got, if you're born with them as someone that's important in your life, there's probably collective karma that you could be clearing and potentially clearing for them if there's karmic permission for that to happen. So that's the job, you know, and that is like a great thing. If you really love them, like I really love my mother, then the thing is to completely let go of everything, every association, every wanting to rescue, every data. Even I was clearing that there is a me and I'm, there is a mother that's suffering. You know, God did not create a suffering mother. It's not real. God did not create a me that's suffering my suffering mother. So it's not real. I want to clear all that stuff that's being tracked because... As you clear that, the, the potential for light and miracles is increasing with divine permission. So that was like, so it's like a, a potential 
to clear every single attachment, you know, until there's nothing left. And that would be a pure conduit. That would be like, there's, not, there's no you that's tracking a special phenomena. Uh, it's happening. As soon as you track something that has baggage, emotions are going to come up, thoughts are going to come up, uh, a, a dualistic perception of a me and a you and a story that needs to happen between a me and you is coming up. So all of that is like lowering the potential for miracles. We do, we do of course, some miracles here. So I want to, where there's maximum love, for me, I want a maximum clear. You know, I want to totally let go of all specialness, all tracking, all meaning. The word mother, you know, is meaningless. My history and my baggage around mother is meaningless, you know. If I'm f feeling like the tools I share here, it's, in the Course of Miracles, it's all meaningless. Whatever's tracked is meaningless. Make it meaningless. My mother's meaningless. My baggage around my mother is meaningless. My memories around my mother are meaningless. And that's clearing stuff. That's clearing stuff. Or, I, I feel bad that you're suffering. Well, who am I? What's observing the I that feels bad that you're suffering? Is the observer of the me that sees you as a separate entity is that suffering? Is the observer suffering? Or if that observer is suffering, what's observing or witnessing that? And in that witnessing space, is there any suffering? Is there any duality? Is there anything that needs to be done? So as you start to clear these dualistic things which are holding these patterns within the collective, these things, great power is brought in. Great power is brought in. The less of me there is, perceiving something needs to change the more light comes in. So if I really love someone, I want to clear me out of the way so that there is no me having a personal story of what needs to happen in this situation or picking up personal change. And that was, in so many miracles happened, you know, my mother passed away, I told her I loved her, she told me she loved me. There was so much baggage in there, it wasn't like that in the beginning. I haven't got time to talk about it. But that I knew that I could see miracles happen uh, in the relationship and in what could happen by clearing. So for me it's like, if I'm, you know, like if I'm with a family member or someone I love, or it could be romantic or it could be something, someone you feel, well for me it's clearing everything. Because all of that is symbolic of specialness, if we use coarse language. All of that is tying to a dualistic me-you relationship in that situation. So when the ego wants a special payoff, like I want you to live forever and I want to wave a magic wand on you or something, with all that special projection, it's actually, it's actually allowing less light to that person. Um, so the enlightened teachers are not going to have a, like a see you as being special because their capacity for miracles would reduce because they're in the infinite. They're in the infinite realm all the time. They're not having a personal dualistic tracking and that's why the awesome miracles or in Indian literature they call them the cities. Cities are not going to happen if I'm having a personal thing happening. The cities is dissolving of the separated self and then uh, that allows grace to to unfold. Uh, if I'm going through that then everything that's coming up for me is to be cancelled, is God did not create it or go to the observer of it or use a letting go process, feel out the energy that's coming up and don't make a story. Just keep feeling out the energy, don't make a story. Feel out the energy, don't make a story until it dissolves in the non-dual realm, until there's nothing to feel out and there's nothing to track because that will mean that uh, you're in, to, in, in the infinite. You're not, i.e. you're not experiencing in, in separation any longer. And that's where maximum potentiality for miracles and grace allows. So that for me is what I would do with someone who's suffering. <clears throat>